You may have realized that being healthy feels different than it did in the past now that you're over 50. If you want to maximize your health potential but don't have time to read through overwhelming pages of Google links, this is the show for you. Welcome to Healthy Tips After 50. We love doing the research, finding solutions, talking to health experts, and learning what works and what doesn't. Now, your host. She spent the last 25 years dedicated to feeling her best and is here to share her best findings with you, Susan Rosen. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Susan Rosen. And today I have a really fun, a fun person, woman here to, to spend the podcasting hour with me. So this is great. And I'm probably going to I forgot to ask you how you pronounced your name, (laughs) but I'm going to take a stab at it. Okay. (laughs) I assume it's Deanna. Well, I'm from Texas, Susan, so it's Deanna. Deanna. (laughs) Got it. Okay. Okay. There you go. Deanna. But how about the last name? Schober? Schober. Yeah, you got that one. Oh, I got that one right. Okay. Uh Um, And Deanna is going to tell us about all of her exciting things that she's doing and programs that she has and how she got into all of this. Yeah. So really interesting. I'm so so excited. Thank you. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, um, let's see, I have a, uh, business. I have a podcast and both of those things are owned and co-hosted with my husband, Tony Schober, Mm -hmm. and we help um, mostly women work on their relationship with food, body, exercise, and mind. Um, we do that because we have found that, um, diet culture and yo-yo dieting and societal standards around bodies has really terrorized, um, people as they have tried to pursue their health and their health journey. So we wanted to, I mean, we had our own really, um, difficult journeys, which I can talk about, but Mm. we had our own really difficult journeys, um, in our own health, health, uh, experiences where we both struggled with eating disorders at the same time, which was really fun. (laughs) It made for a really fun dinner conversations. Um, but so we struggled with those at the same time we were running a huge website that was for weight loss. Um, at the time my husband started a a business or a website in 2011 called coach calorie, and it ranked like on the top page of Google and we had sold out coaching programs, but we were really struggling behind the scenes and we were struggling with clients. We like our clients were doing great. They were losing weight, but then they were coming back over and over and over again to lose the weight again and again and again. Uh, uh-huh. yeah. So we were figuring out at the same time that like the same things that were plaguing us were also plaguing our clients, inconsistency, yo-yo dieting, mm. poor body image, emotional eating. We weren't fixing the problems. We were just putting band-aids uh, on those problems okay. and you know, putting it, it was like, you could stick a bandaid on it and they would go away and then the problems would rise back up to the surface and they'd come back. Yeah. So we walked away from that company. We completely rebranded in 20, around 2016, 2017, mm. um, sometime around then. And then um, went in this direction where we decided we were going to help people reach what we call the new ideal body. So it's not societal's ideal body. It's wow. not... Um, your goal body or your perfect body. It's just the body that you're in when you have a healthy relationship with food, a healthy mm-hmm. relationship with your body, with exercise and with your mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what we do. We help women do that um, in our program and on our podcast, which is called Fitness and Sushi. <laughs> did, I, did I answer that right? <laughs> did, I, did I get it yeah. all in there? Oh, no, no, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. So I have to ask, where did fitness and sushi come in? I love that you asked that question because it's my favorite story. (laughs) So one of the um, many disordered eating patterns that my husband and I both had was we would binge and then we would restrict, we would restrict, then we would binge. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we restricted was rice, sushi, um, carbs, all carbs, all grains, all the stuff that we loved. And we restricted it just in order to lose weight. We had a very negative um, association with those things Mm -hmm. and um, it would lead to us binging on those things. So we could restrict, 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 and then we would binge, binge, binge. 
And um, so we just had a very disordered relationship with sushi, even though it was our favorite thing. It was something we bonded over when we first met. And so we, um, when we started to heal and started to repair our relationship with food, we started going back to sushi restaurants. And so that was what we would do every Wednesday. We would go, um, my mother-in-law would come and watch our, our children and we would go to the sushi restaurant and we would talk about healing and we would talk about how we were going to rebrand and move our clients in this new direction where we weren't putting them through yo-yo dieting anymore. We were actually yeah. helping them heal and ha- having them actually solve those problems. Mm-hmm. And it happened over, like we, we came up with all of these concepts, everything over sushi. And my husband, you know, we like, I think that one of the things that people say when they hear our podcast is like, I feel like I'm sitting in the room with like two best friends we, we just have really good chemistry we have a great uh-huh. marriage a really fun marriage and uh-huh. he was uh we would have these great conversations and he was like we should when I was like we should put a microphone up to these tables and we should have yeah. a podcast and we should call it <laughs> fitness and sushi <laughs> there you go yeah so, and thus the name was born all right no that's great that's great and and sushi really isn't that I mean it's not like it's that fattening or no it's very good for you it was just yeah. um I mean, a fish is amazing for you. I know that like sometimes people have insulin issues and can't eat white mm-hmm. rice. And, and that was like, right. we were, we were back then doing that bro science. It was like, we didn't, oh, okay. um, we didn't, neither of us had any issues with insulin. We didn't have diabetes and we weren't pre-diabetic, but it was just this gimmick that we had fallen for. No white rice, no grains. I was following um, like a strict paleo diet back then. That was like uh, my thing back then. Do so, it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No grains. I remember the paleo diet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were doing paleo and intermittent fasting. We were doing all everything good. all at the same time. Okay. Yeah, it was very, very much a, a disaster. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, and, and your brain was how? How well was your brain doing? Not, not well at all. Yeah. <laughs> we were not thinking. We were not, we were exhausted. We were grumpy. We were, and then we were binging on sushi and candy, you know, for entire weekends. So it wasn't really working. But you were doing it together. But we were doing it together. We were a nightmare <laughs> together. We, I mean, the good the good thing about that, I mean, the, the downfall of it was that we were doing it together. You know, Mm -hmm. we were, he was definitely influencing me. I was definitely influencing him. It was when it was bad, it was bad. And, but when the good part, the flip side of that was that when we were healing, we were healing together and we were overcoming Mm -hmm. these things together. And we were in that, it, it was something that we've learned is like, getting out of diet culture and changing the way that you relate to food and changing Mm -hmm. your value system when it comes to your body, instead of valuing the way it looks like valuing the way you feel, um, you have to be immersed in, uh, in an environment where that's okay. And where that Mm -hmm. is applauded even. And so it really helped for us to have each other at that time, because no one else was doing this. Everyone else was still diet culture. And, you know, this traditional fitness industry is just so, uh, I mean, we were part of it. I say that as having been a part of that culture. Yeah. yeah, it's very pervasive. So um, it was nice that we had each other to bounce yeah. those ideas off of. Yeah, well, and it also what comes to mind is that it also makes it a lot easier. People aren't they are not finger pointing at each other. Right. Yeah. Oh, you did this. Oh, no, you yeah. did that. And, uh, mm-hmm. Right. Well, um, there was a little of that. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, not, but but you know what I'm saying. It, yeah, no, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's not like one person, only one person had a problem. Right. And his, I think his was more serious. And well, I don't want to say that, but his, the severity Different. of his was pretty intense and mm. uh, compared to mine. I was just really good at restricting. I was really good at um, getting lean. And then I would lose control for like a weekend where he would be able to restrict for a while, but then he would also binge for a long time. Uh, so his was classified as binge eating disorder because he would uh, actually lose a lot of weight and he would get really uh-huh. lean. And then he would actually start binging and it would get up to like 10,000 calories a day. And he was putting on 30 pounds uh, in a month. Oh my God. And this happened, like, I was just telling you about our beautiful wedding in mm-hmm. Sausalito. This happened, yeah. um, leading up to our wedding. He got, oh, no. he had a binge episode <laughs> leading up to our wedding. And he was, um, that was how we spent the preparation time for our wedding was dealing with that. So 
that wasn't very fun. <laughs> mm, ew, oops, yeah. 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 It was a lot to, a lot of emotional fallout to deal with. Um, oh, I happened to be, of course, because I was the bride, I was, <laughs> I had to be in the best shape of my life. Um, so, but we were both just really, really, it wasn't too long after that, that we just both were so tired of it and so tired of That's what happens. the roller coaster. Yeah, you have to get to, you have to get to that point mm-hmm. before you can say, oh, okay, I'm done. Right. No more. Yeah. That's what, when I usually, when I talk to women who are coming in my program, uh-huh. um, they're at, they're almost always the ones who decide to, to come in are almost always at their rock bottom. Nobody's just like casually like, Oh, this sounds interesting. They're at rock bottom because diets have failed them so much and they are so right. sick of it. Mm-hmm. And so I, you know, it's like, there's nothing but up from here, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. it's so, um, it rock bottom, at least it sucks, but it's the end and you can, you can rebound only one way. There. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. only one way and that's up. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I can understand that. I can totally understand that. Yeah. So what, what kind of programs do you have? Cause it's not just one single. It right? is. We have one, oh, it we is? have one program. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, tell me about your one specialize. program. <laughs> yeah. We, we specialize um, in, we have one program that takes you through your relationship with food, your relationship okay. with your body, with uh-huh. exercise in your mind. We go through those four okay. things. I so. guess maybe that's what I was thinking of. It's yeah. not just one. Right. Lane. Yeah. It's four sections. And those things are all very interwoven and overlap yeah. in a lot of ways, but each, each area has its own specific characteristics. Like if you have a poor relationship with food, you might be um, eating perfect all day and then overeating at nighttime or eating perfect all week and then overeating on the weekends or on vacation or, you know, it's the roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you might be emotionally eating. You might be numbing out with food. You might be um, stress eating, those kinds of things it, with your body. You're thinking about your body all the time. You're looking in the mirror, you're picking it apart. Mm-hmm. Um, you feel like your value, the size of your body ha- is very tied to your worth. Um, uh-huh you feel very insecure about your body, body dysmorphia, those kinds of things with exercise, exercise feels like a chore. It's something that you're Mm -hmm. either doing and dreading or you're avoiding uh, because it's like a chore that you have to check off of a list. A lot of people have that, that relationship with exercise because of diet culture. It's made it like no excuses. You have to do it like this or it doesn't count. And so, um, that and then your mind is all about your mindset. So all or nothing mm. thinking tends to be come from diet culture, um, black and white thinking, rule following, and rather than like thinking in nuance yeah. and kind of making up your own rules. So we go through each of those things and um we we work intensely with our clients because it's not you know, it, it very much has I always tell my, the people coming in, this is not like fitness coaching. It's more like life coaching. Cause it's a complete transformation yeah. Yeah. of, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, a health. Complete it's transformation. health coaching. It's yeah. health coaching. Well, and it's, which is a type mostly, of life. I mean, that health yeah. coaching is more of a life coaching kind of yeah. thing rather than, you know, dieting or, or some, something like that. Just it's, it's much more all encompassing. It is. And it's a lot of psychology and I'm actually in school to for psychology right now because I was so fascinated by how much psychology has uh, to do with with uh-huh. these be- the, these particular behaviors and how our brains um primitive desire to keep us alive uh, gets in the way of us really thriving so it, uh-huh. our survival systems are triggered when we're on diets like scarcity around food when you take a food yes. away when you say you can't have sugar this the the, you know, the, the, the brain's primitive response to that is, well, now I have to scan my environment because sugar is missing and I have to find it. And I'm going to obsess about it until I do find it. And then when I do find it, I'm going to eat it all because I don't know when it's coming again. That's just the way that our brains work. And that fascinates me. So I'm, I'm uh, making it official and getting my master's degree in in psychology. That's great. Yeah, that's great. To make that a thing. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. So yeah, it's oh, mostly yeah. it's mostly mindset work what we do, and and we help our clients to um, formulate and create their own. Like 
what's your own personal idea? How healthy do you want to be? Not like, what do you think you should be doing, but what do you want? And then just Mm -hmm. kind of creating that from a place of abundance, not scarcity and without triggering those psychological um, characteristics of survival that will come in Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. um, to do that in a way that feels sustainable and that feels personalized and, and not like you're having to follow a bunch of rules. That's what dieting is. It's following rules and nobody that's not going to last the rest of your life. (laughs) Nobody likes rules. We like to break the rules. That's true. That's true. But that's, that's why you need, to have rules that are something people can live with mm-hmm. well, it's, for, a, for a while. And then what we have found is that they need to create mm-hmm. their own rules. Okay. That, yeah. And we, well, and I don't even call a them similar kind of, yeah. Yeah. I don't even call them rules. I would call them like flexible guidelines. It's like, this mm-hmm. is what I do most of the time. And that's how they can. And so even somebody with like a, almost food a lifestyle. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's somebody with a food intolerance obviously can't eat that food or there's going to be consequences to that. But the difference between telling somebody you can never eat that food again for the rest of your life versus you can eat that food if you want to, but if you do, you're going to have like massive diarrhea for the rest of the day. And that's the consequence. I know that it seems silly, but these things, these shifts in mindset are huge. And because you're working with your, your own, you're working with the brain, the the way that your brain works. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and there is a difference between because everybody I know who has allergies, for instance, mm-hmm. cheats mm-hmm. sometimes on some mm-hmm. foods. Everybody's yeah. got those, right? Mm-hmm. And the thing that people with allergies learn is which ones they can handle cheating on right. and which ones yeah. they can't. Right. That's okay. it. And that's it. Yeah. 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 And that's the, I mean, I know just for myself, you know, I'll eat bread. I'm allergic to wheat. Mm-hmm. And I'll eat regular bread occasionally. I don't do it every day. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I can handle that. And I don't even have, mm-hmm. I don't take an antihistamine or anything like that. I just, you know, blow my nose a little more than mm-hmm. normal. And if I have hibiscus tea, I can't breathe. You go into so, anaphylactic shock. Well, I just literally. Your throat closes up and you can't breathe. breathe. Yeah, my whole oh. chest and, and everything. And it's the B1. Mm-hmm. That's that's it. I have found out that I can't do B1. Can't take them in. And, you know, vitamins, anything. Just yeah. keep it just keep it away from me. Right? And so that's why I'm saying there's, there's like different degrees. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But in the kind of, of thing that, that you're helping people with, there isn't as much of the degrees. It's a whole different. Right. It's very black and white. Yeah. Yeah. That's that mindset of like, it's just, it's all or nothing. And anytime you're trying mm-hmm. to do something in that all or nothing, black and white mentality, you feel more rebellious because you feel oppressed <sighs> by the rule or by the doctor mm-hmm. or by the allergy. Mm-hmm. And you're not making a decision for yourself, like what you're uh-huh. talking about, where you're like, sometimes I eat bread because, you know, I don't eat it every day, but it's when I do, it's not thing I can't handle. It's worth it. You know, sometimes it's worth yeah. it. And you know that. So you have information and you're making an informed decision. Right. And so that's how you approach your health in um, a very nuanced shades of gray way mm-hmm. is I just know I have information. I know that, you know, peanut butter has more calories per gram than, you know, an apple does. It's not that peanut butter is good or bad. It just is more calorie dense than this. And so sometimes it's worth it and I eat the peanut butter and sometimes it's not. And I eat the apple. Sometimes I eat the apple and the peanut butter together. Together. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's not a coincidence that I picked those two things because that is a good combination. Ah, it is a good combination. Yeah. But it's you, you have to start instead of just following these rules of this is good and this is bad, you start to formulate, um, you know, some loose, some loose guidelines of what you need to do most of the time. And that Mm -hmm. will make you healthy. It can 
make you at your healthiest, you, you'll reach your healthiest weight for you mm-hmm. and your body. Yeah. But if you're trying, if you are just like, I can't eat carbs and I have to be a size three and I have to weigh as much as I did in high school and I have to look like this or I'm not worthy. That's just, there's so much pressure. That's a whole that, different issue. Yes. Yeah. There's so much pressure that comes in with that mindset that just, mm-hmm. you can't function like that. There's, you mm-hmm. you will go through the yo-yo diet cycle and the yo-yo diet cycle is more, their studies are, are coming out. It's more linked to lifestyle diseases than, than just holding at a higher weight. It is mm-hmm. more linked to, um, diabetes and, mm-hmm. um, and like high blood pressure and those kinds of things that we have always associated with obesity. When in wow. reality, what we're seeing is it's more associated with yo-yo dieting because yeah. you're, it's so unhealthy for our body to be going back and forth like that. Right. So, um, yeah, we're, we're trying to get people out of that cycle and get them uh, to a place where they stop yo-yo dieting and just can be healthy and take care of themselves, but not because it makes them more worthy or valuable or more mm-hmm. attractive or, um, but it's just been hammered into our brains as, especially as women, um, mm-hmm. growing yeah. up with diet culture and especially, for I think my generation and older um, really got the, the, the brunt of the diet culture stuff. <laughs> like it really, oh, really yeah. got reinforced to us. Oh no, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, cause I know just even for me, I mean, my God, when I was in high school, I think it was, I, I joined Weight Watchers. That was when they mm-hmm. started, they had just started mm-hmm. and it was more food than I could eat. Mm-hmm. Isn't that funny? Yeah. And you're not supposed to trust your body. You know, at that point, you're supposed to trust Weight Watchers and what they're telling you. But that's, yeah. that's funny, because now a lot of the, um, I, I think, probably 75% of my clients have been on Weight mm-hmm. Watchers. Um, that's the number one thing that they say to me, <laughs> uh-huh. like Weight Watchers is the, the one that we've all done, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Mm-hmm. And once they brought in yep. like the point system and everything, they were uh. starving. They were so hungry. And that's like what I hear all the time is like, I was so hungry, but they don't realize they're hungry. Yeah. They just think they're weak because they're eating enough food to turn off the hunger signals. Um, okay. But it's not enough that they stop thinking about food. And yeah. so they just eat just enough and then think about food all day. And they sit and, you know pray for it to go away and that the next way in will be successful. But then, you know, your body is in famine mode at that point. And it's like I said, it's always trying to survive. So it's sending you these signals like eat, you know, it's making you think about food, having a lot of thoughts about Mm -hmm. food. You're craving, uh, you're having a lot of cravings because that's what your body wants. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and then they end up binging mm-hmm. and then they feel guilty and they yeah. go back to Weight Watchers. Yeah. And that's why people have been on Weight Watchers for like 50 times <laughs> in their lifetime. <laughs> the same reason they kept coming back to me and my husband over and over and over again, because it's a, the dieting does not work. It just doesn't mm-hmm. work. It doesn't fix, it doesn't fix the, the, the things that are really actually, uh, need attention. Okay. Okay. No, that, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Cause it's not with a lot of these diets, it's not even that they're eating, that they go and eat too many calories. It's just that they eat. There's that whole thing of just eating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter what it is that they're eating. Although sometimes yeah. it's sugar or something like that. Right. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of the time it's, it's, it's just the whole thing of putting stuff in their mouth. Yeah. It's a way to detach something that I'm learning in my psychology classes is uh-huh. that, yeah. When, when you're eating emotionally or you're stressed eating, it's a way of going into freeze mode. So when you go through the stress cycle, you go through either fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. I always get, always get tongue tied at those and emotionally Uh eating is a way to freeze. You're disassociating from Uh your feelings, from your stress, from your problems, from life, um, by eating. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, if I tell somebody, well, you need to go on a diet that doesn't fix the fact that they don't know how to get themselves through the stress cycle They're right. they're that's not going to fix anything, or it's not going to fix their problems for sure. It's not going to fix the, the fact that they don't know how to, um, process emotions if that's the, the case. So, mm-hmm. um, it just makes it worse because then they go on a diet and they go through that yo-yo cycle and they never 
end up solving the problem. And that's why they end up back again and again and again. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it would seem as well that, and I don't know if, if this is how you guys do it or, or whatever, but if you can get them eating, get the person eating a healthy mm-hmm. diet, and mm-hmm. I don't mean that diet as in less calories, yes. da, 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 right? But uh, the food you eat, yes. Food you eat, yeah. The weight will start to come off mm-hmm. just by itself. And we always say like the more that you are trying to lose weight, the harder <sighs> yeah. it is to do. Because you're laser focused and you're making decisions based on that, that are not sustainable. Um, So, you know, we like, uh, when we do, when we see our clients losing weight, it's because they've forgotten about losing weight and they're just focused on eating. We get them eating three core meals a day that satiate, satisfy, and nourish them. Those are, that's Uh our three criteria for each meal. It's got to be satiating. It's got to make you full. It's got to be satisfying. You have to actually like it and it's got to be nourishing. So it's got, you know, it's a whole food. That's really all we uh-huh. care about. Like it's a whole food yeah. um, most of the time and not a hundred percent of the time even, but most of the time and that they feel so good when they do that, they don't feel um, deprived. So they're not going to the binge restrict cycle mm-hmm. and they feel more energy. They feel good. If emotional eating does come up, they have the tools, you know, we teach them how to yeah. manage the stress cycle. We teach them how to become more in touch with their feelings and their emotions Um, we teach them these, these things, the, the typical reasons why we're turning to food. And yeah, that's why we say like losing weight will be a side effect of that. It's just the side effect of you learning how to process your feelings, emotions, feeding Uh yourself and like enjoying feeling good. Cause I think that that's addicting. Yes, yes, yes. And just enjoying life. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoying life. That's such a huge part of it. Um, so many people are, are, just don't they're they're shut down and they're not living that they're not living that full life and not experiencing mm-hmm. they're they're bogged down by stress bogged down by careers there's so many expectations especially on women um that mm. uh, where they have every role you know yeah. that's put on them and and they're just not functioning we kind of are trying to wake them up to put themselves first and to take care of themselves in that way because it yeah. gives you it affords you so much more energy but it's hard because you have to demand things from the people around you you have to demand your time you have to demand help you have to demand community you have to demand um that boundaries in a lot of cases with toxic mm-hmm. people around mm-hmm. you and toxic relationships mm. at work. There's a lot to it. <laughs> oh my God. Such, yeah. And, and maybe why even I say, at home. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There's a lot to it. So that's why it's like, it's so, I think that some people probably just need to go and get an education around, um, what is a healthy food and what isn't but for 99 percent of people it's just not that simple they need all of that it's a holistic approach they need to have that that awareness around their emotions they need to have boundaries in their life they need to prioritize themselves to put themselves first and like this percent of it is eat some fruits and vegetables <laughs> at your meals it's really very very simple it's not a matter of if you're eating the, those things or not it's a matter of why aren't you why aren't you already doing it? Because most people yeah. know that they should be. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh no, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, there's always, there's always the other way that people kind of sneak around things, which is like, oh, well, I ate a lot of fruit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I bet you did. Uh-huh. It's impossible <laughs> to, I always tell people people. as much as you should have, but yeah, you know, it's, it's almost impossible to overeat fruit. It's when you overeat it, processed food, you can eat nonstop. And it it does not work with the way that your body is made. So it doesn't turn off those hunger signals. You can't overeat a bag of apples. Like nobody's going to overeat a bag of apples because it turns off your hunger signals, at least not if you're paying attention. So, and it's not, um, mm. it's not highly palatable the way that a lot of processed foods are and stuff. So it's, um, but yeah, yeah, it's all about, it's, it's very hard to overeat whole foods is what we have discovered. <laughs> Uh, that's funny that's funny yeah see because fruit's always been my downfall I mean I could just, oh really oh my god yeah I love yeah, fruit you should too. see my the yogurt that I my lunch blueberries uh-huh. and raspberries and raisins and um I'm trying to think what else I put in there that's fruit whatever else happens to be in in season mm-hmm. you know that's banana too. um yeah 
Yeah. And then throw in the almonds and the, <laughs> uh-huh. that's my favorite. I love that. My yogurt has like my, uh, my husband's like, you should have some yogurt with your strawberries. <laughs> like it's just such, it's giant. <laughs> I love strawberries. I love blueberries. Mm. I love all those things. So, yeah. but they're very good for you. You know, you're getting, yeah. uh, we try to think about um, what you're getting from it rather than, you know, like yeah. what's, we, we think about addition, not subtraction that keeps you in that mm-hmm. abundant state of mind. And yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's great. It's very, it's very difficult to overeat fruit. It really is. <laughs> well, I'm glad to know that. Cause I always yeah. feel like that's what I'm doing. It's like, Oh no, I can't, I shouldn't take another apple. Oh no, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's got so many nutrients. It's very good for you. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. But anyways, <laughs> we won't go down that lane. Um, <laughs> why don't we, why don't you, tell people where they can find you and we'll put all this stuff in the show notes besides okay and um you know and and how it how it works i mean is it is it individual like they sign up or is it that a program starts in i don't know september and Mm -hmm. you know you have to wait until then to get in you know is it a group is it one-on-one you know just or is it all of those things it's all of those (laughs) things um the best way I think to get started with us is my husband wrote a book and Uh it's we hear from people all the time um it's pretty life-changing and you can read that online for free at idealbodyformula.com that's the probably the best way to kind of just see what we're about, see if you would benefit from what we do like Uh I said there's a small percentage of people who can just you know, eat that healthy food. And that that's all they need is an education. We don't do education around healthy. Food. It's like very, very minimum. What we do is help the people who know what they should be doing, but Got just it. can't make themselves do it um, long term. Are they going through that, that cycle? So idealbodyformula.com. Our podcast is fitness and sushi. Another great way to kind of if you're a podcast Mm -hmm. listener to go see what we're about. And my program is called the built daily mentorship. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is a, it's a combination of one-on-one you're working directly with me. You're, we are meeting in a group twice a week because Mm -hmm. I believe in the power of both of those things, Mm -hmm. um, especially with women. And this program is for women, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have a program that they go through asynchronously on their own. Um, I just was on another podcast. I've, I've, just was reminding myself stop saying asynchronous because every time I talk to a teacher and they hear the word asynchronous they're like oh my god flashbacks of the pandemic so (laughs) you're you're going through a program (laughs) on your own in your own time um but it in that program walks you through our formula and the steps to take in order to heal your relationship with food body exercise and mind I walk Mm -hmm. you through the creation process it's going to look completely customized to you for your own lifestyle Mm. and what that looks like but deprogramming diet culture comes first and then the creation process is fairly straightforward so um that is you can find out more info um actually just go to our book and read the book and it'll it'll send you there automatically so idolbodyformula.com okay idolbodyformula.com got it that'll they'll eventually will invite you into the mentorship program. <laughs> That's that it. Sounds good. Yeah, no, it sounds sounds great. I think I think you definitely have the right way, the right approach. Thank you. What we, we've we have we see a I would say I would say a hundred percent, but every so often um success rate by the way. Um mm-hmm. every so often somebody like disappears off the face of the earth and I'm always so puzzled when someone does that like they sign up for this program and then they disappear but I still I think that that's part of diet culture because they're afraid Mm -hmm. um, of what they're going to have to do even though they may not have fully understood and 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 embarrassed probably embarrassed as well but but that happens so rarely because I um if people stop showing up then I chase them down (laughs) I'm like where have you been I don't let people get away from me that easily. So um, <laughs> we um, we we see a massive success rate because this is just this is the only way that works with your your mm. brain and with your with mm-hmm. uh, the mm-hmm. way that our brains are meant to work. So this mm-hmm. is a great program. We're very proud yeah. of it. Yeah. No, it sounds like it. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And I would assume, wrongly or rightly, that even if if men are interested, they can read the book as well. Yes. Not, right. I mean, yeah. that's going to be applicable to them just as much. Yes. You know, maybe yeah. your, your online program, you know, you don't, you don't have that, you know, that kind of thing. And but- I'll work with men. It's just that our, our group is women. And so our, our group part is women. Yeah. I'll, I'll coach men if they've, um, okay. the thing is like, we we find that, um, the body image stuff that tends to come up. I mean, obviously my husband wrote the book, so he dealt with this. And so yeah. men definitely do deal with body image struggles and right. with diet culture. Yeah. Um, and I have a lot of my clients who are women who are sharing everything that they're learning with their husbands and their husbands say... are changing. Yeah. yeah. So we, because of the group aspect, um, we, we, keep the group, um, for women, maybe someday I'll start a men's group. I don't know, but yeah, if you're a guy and you are struggling with this, I don't want you to struggle with, I can talk to you as well and definitely read the book. Um, but obviously my husband wrote it. And so there's, I'm sure there's other guys out there like him. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I think, I think that there, if I could talk, I think that there are a lot more men having these kinds of problems, mm-hmm. especially the last couple of decades. You yeah, know? I think so. It's, Obviously, it's, they are because yeah. Well, it's come out. They've they've been able to come out in the open about mm-hmm. it. I mm-hmm. think before that yeah. it was like, oh no, only women, only women have that kind of, of an issue. Yeah, yeah, you know? and it's definitely not. I think that um, for men, it it um, there's a lot of the the food stuff is very, very prominent, I think more than people yeah. realize, um, and food addiction and those kinds of things too. Mm. But yeah, Tony ha- talking about his body image struggles and he talks about it on the podcast. Mm. He's a hundred percent healed at this point and doing great. Um, but it was a big struggle for him and he felt oh. very alone. He felt very mm. alone with that. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, if you're a guy, it, it's, yeah. you're not alone and you can read Tony's, um, journey right. with it and reach out to him, you know, mm-hmm. he's, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. No, he's absolutely. one of the, one of the men that this affected for sure. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and if there's any women listening and their husbands are having or sons or whoever are having mm-hmm. issues, you know, send them to, to it as well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It'll yeah. help anybody who's struggling with those things. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. Well, we should probably wrap up and um, thank you so much for being on. And I will say my usual at the end, which is that neither of us are doctors and this is not to be seen as medical advice. Um, and with that, I will see everybody next week. This has been Healthy Tips After 50 with Susan Rosen. To stay on the cutting edge of the most effective health strategies, subscribe to this podcast and let us know what you thought of the show with a comment or like on iTunes. Visit HealthyTipsAfter50.com for this episode's show notes, more resources, and free offers.